I did get married. How about a prenup? I think it was a perk. Baby Bia has that. I don't want to get up in the morning, you know? I'm not just in this for the Bluetooth sponsorships. Yeah, someone DM'd me actually, and they made like 50K after the video dropped. I pulled it up, TJ. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> Go right ahead. It's free promo, you know how it is. Yeah, it's a little piece of a big piece. I mean, that's on the side. I'm gonna take off the spinny. All right, I think we're live. good. We're live on Rumble and Kick right now. Whoa, <laughs> bro, please put us on YouTube, please. I feel like this is kind of risky. Yeah, this is crazy. Like, what is, what how is, is it risky? up to? Not because I feel like normally when like a couple guys have a decent convo and buy some podcast equipment, they'll do like a hundred episodes before they ever get listened to. And so they have those reps. Whereas with us, I mean, this might get some decent viewership and yeah. we're just like, diving but, in but Nelk kind of dived in too and i mean they're not that That's... good but bro, they're all right bro <laughs> those are no beef like three seconds into the pod yeah no goofy <laughs> impulsive <The beat>. podcast <laughs> wars <laughs> yeah but i feel like they they kind of had a format where they're like out and about and talking to people mm -hmm. whereas i mean first podcast appearance yes sir um second second when was your first? Bro, what? Uh, back in the day. Oh, you bro. were in Joe Rogan, huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sir, that was in me. no way, bro. <laughs> I, I think this is my second. I was on the Ice Coffee Hour with Graham Stephan and Jack Selby. Okay. Uh, but I feel like, yeah, it's kind of, we'll see how it goes. I mean, this is going on the second channel, so it's kind of risk-free. Yeah, no big deal, yeah. Yeah, is that the plan? Second channel? Um, just podcasts or what? Yeah, I think we'll rename the second channel. Mm -hmm. And then, because the thing is, if we get, um, if we put it up on my main channel, like that's going to just take over the whole channel. And yep. I lose the, a huge yeah. asset. Yeah. I'd my probably unsubscribe if I was a main <laughs> channel subscriber. <laughs> and there's just like two hour long conversations for no reason. You know, I think it's different. Speaking of that, main channel, it's been <laughs> eight, eight months <laughs> it's been like three months no yeah. well i made my like little announcement video that i'm stepping back um uh, earlier this year can you dive in more, let's, more in let's depth, dive like... into that yeah um i think it's just the kind of format a video i was making where it's kind mm -hmm. of like you have to reinvent the wheel every week every yeah. saturday you have to have like a a movie up <laughs> and right after saturday you're back to square one so it's kind of like this yep hamster wheel I don't want to sound repetitive because I feel like I keep saying yeah. that, but it's this hamster wheel of you upload on Saturday, boom, you're back to square one. You upload on Saturday, boom, you're back to square one. You're stressing, you're trying to think of a new idea and just completely start from scratch. So it doesn't really feel like you're building anything. Yep. And I feel like that just was not a vibe to do for three years, three, yeah. four years. So, and hopefully with this podcast, I can continue being in the content game. Yep but now it's kind of like a repeatable format so we don't have to reinvent the wheel every week yeah do you see yourself like getting back into like you know 10 minute videos ever or are you just done completely maybe but like i said i, I think i want to treat it more as a hobby so like if i have a topic i want to talk about yeah. maybe i'll pump something out but i don't think i want to get into like the yo drop shipping challenge <laughs> type of content again yeah. just because it was like it was so it was a grind yeah, I mean, I, so. you know everybody's talking about yeah. it now but yeah. it's just not a very sustainable type of setup i mean being that consistent for like three years right was that three years how long have you been yeah i think it was like three and a half years i mean yeah there's there's people who's done who've done it for longer like casey three years of daily uploads did you ever yeah. skip an upload like were you ever late um bro not really i remember really. watching it like you were just on top of it like yeah saturdays 12 p.m or whatever yeah yeah, I remember I had like a surgery on my foot, like a pretty serious, it was called a Liz Frank surgery where like my big toe split apart from the rest of my foot and they had, to drill that it back. <laughs> they had to drill it back. And even after that, like the day of the surgery, I'm like getting off of the drugs and I'm mm. still on the computer editing. Like I, I, was, I was really Under about it. Influence? What drugs That's are you fire. talking about? Uh, you I think like it was a perk. Ooh, oh, perk. how'd you get the injury? What, was that the skating thing or? Something? Nah, that was my wrist, which I still continued uploading throughout my wrist injuries. But that was, yeah. um, that was, uh, <laughs> it was an ultimate frisbee injury, <laughs> <laughs> goofy eye injury. Yeah, that's but, right. Yeah, but I mean, the people want you back. Like, I, I don't know if if you've seen your comments. Like, the people are feeding for you. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, like, we, we can go into the the little little something I found on Instagram. Last post, you know, November 2021. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been a couple of years. Some of the top comments, some of the recent comments. Lil bro, start posting before I start looking for your ass. <laughs> okay. Um, what does that have to do? I mean, that was a good excuse. I like the excuse of like, oh, you know, we're just stepping away a little bit. I, I kind of made a video saying how I'm going to step away from the hamster wheel. But some of the loyal fans saw a little... A little something in the second slide of that Instagram post. Uh, a little a female sneak peek. <laughs> but before we get into that, we have to thank the sponsor of today's episode, AutoDS. One click of a button is all it takes to create an AI pre-built e-com store with AutoDS. You want to get some motion. You want to get your bread up this year. AutoDS is your one-stop shop for pretty much all your e-commerce needs. They are one of the top services for fulfilling e-commerce orders. And so using the data that they have from that, they can show you what products are currently selling in the winning product section of their website. They even have a TikTok ad spy tool, which you can use to find what ads are being used to sell the winning product. And if you don't already have a dropshipping store built, they've just launched a feature where you choose a niche and they'll provide an AI generated store built for you automatically. Find winning products, find winning advertisements and have your orders fulfilled all within AutoDS. They can customize their products for you so you have custom branding. They can offer quicker shipping time so you can build a real solid business, not just some bump and dump scheme. Feel free to check them out with a link in the description. And now let's get on with the episode. A female? Wow, that's that's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> where do we begin with that? I'll, I think as far as the disappearance, I do agree. I feel like there is a small, I had this moment. I had this moment a couple of weeks ago where like this super niche YouTuber, he's not super big or nothing, but I just really enjoy his videos and he hasn't uploaded in like three months and I've just Who been fiending. It? I'm not going to name drop because <laughs> it's like a local, it's in a different language, okay. bro. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> it's like this super niche micro internet celebrity. Kind of like you. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't upload in three months and then he uploaded just like a random vlog like it wasn't anything special but yeah. when i saw the upload bro, i got giddy like i was on my bed i was on my phone watching yeah. the video and i feel like maybe for a small subset of my audience maybe they feel that way about my videos and so with a podcast they can still kind of maybe get some value from it get some entertainment mm -hmm. whereas um let it let it go <laughs> they can still get some <laughs> So as you can see here, bro's capping. Uh, there's absolutely definitely a female in his life at this point, probably. <laughs> I'll try to explain the podcast section of that uh, question. But anyways, yeah, that's kind of the goal of the podcast. But yes, there is a female. I did get married. Oh, man. This year, this really? last year. Oh, wow. I did get married. And see, I don't know how public I want to be about this relationship. Like, I don't see if there's like what the upside is mm -hmm. of being very public about it. Family channel. Family channel, okay. Baby be a Heza. But see, we don't have a baby yet, so I don't well, know. Well, you got to work there. on that. It takes some work. How do you do that? that we, we could save that for Rumble. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to reveal my wife until it gets yeah. super dry. Like, if we don't, we're running dry <laughs> for guests. Like, we have absolutely no guests. Yeah. The show, if if I need to save the show, yep. maybe I'll sacrifice Drop my that. wife's Drop privacy. <laughs> but okay. she's great. I love her to death. Uh, yeah. I think the relationship has had like a really positive effect. You got married this year too. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I want to see if like you feel that way too. Before my relationship, like as a single man, I would have just kind of really high highs and really low lows. Mm -hmm. Like one week I'm on top of the world. Like I'm, I'm feeling good. I can conquer the world. Okay. Next week I'm like, I don't want to get up in the morning. You know, I'm just, I'm just down in the dooms of despair and then you're saying once you got the female it's like just like this kind of well once i got my particular female i feel like it, she it's always high huh <laughs> it's not always high but she brought a lot of peace into my life to where it's just like yeah. a more stable homeostasis of like joy and happiness yeah. like i don't okay. have the huge dips and i don't want to sound insane like i wasn't insane before but like <laughs> yeah but I can, I can relate to that. i know what you mean it's more like they just bring a certain like homey feel to your life in a way i don't know if that makes sense yeah and but it's like this calmness yeah i'll get there yeah. one day <laughs> i mean there, there's some craziness too sometimes you know it's like the ups and downs but those ups and downs are still positive in a way like you know you're figuring something out with your your wife you know yeah. it's like it's a yeah. big big step and it also makes you more responsible i think there's like so much more responsibility you now have oh yeah a wife that's a part of your life you know it's it's not just like you chilling in your you know penthouse <laughs> and whatnot it yeah, you have responsibility more. yeah yeah and then i think 
I think the fact that it's a wife and not a girlfriend is also a pretty big difference. Because I feel like when you have the girlfriend, there's still like, it's still not a lock, you know? Yeah. If you break up tomorrow, you can just, there's no consequence. Yeah. Like the, you're, there's still that inkling of like, this isn't a complete lock. Whereas with marriage, yeah. it's, I, I recommend it. I think it's a beautiful thing where it's like, there's just no more doubt. There's no more yeah. anything. It's just, you're with this person. Like yeah. you're committed to each other for life. And it's just yeah. like this, I think it contributes to that feeling of calmness. Like you have this, uh, this, this, I don't yeah. want to say rock, but you have like this yeah. stability. Yeah. Well, she does, she probably does have a rock on her finger. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> there's a little bit of that, but I think that's, I mean, I think it's important, but speaking of like this calmness and, and security, um, what do you think about a prenup? <laughs> do you have something like that set up or, and at what point would a man like myself or somebody in the audience consider that i put man that was <laughs> this is a pretty crazy that, one but no nah, it's a fair question um i put a lot of thought into this like it was a big concern for me mm -hmm. obviously i i even told her going into the relationship like early on if it ever got to marriage there would need to be a prenup like she knew going into the relationship that if it were to get serious mm. like a prenup would be necessary and she was ready to sign one, but like I, I ultimately answer no, there's no prenup, but I did do uh, mm. I did do some legal consultations. Mm, okay. I dropped some a nasty amount on some um, on some lawyers to kind of talk about it and give me a rundown. And wow. I don't know, I feel like most people don't know this, but most not most, but I think at least like half of prenups don't actually hold up. Really? So prenups aren't even like it's not a safe bet. Mm, there's yeah. That's there's good. other ways you can be uh you could structure your business and your assets where um where you get a little bit more protection yeah and i think also from what my lawyer was telling me anything you earn before the marriage and like businesses you, you start yeah if like i buy a house before the marriage and i don't commingle that like income from that home mm -hmm. and i don't commingle any money with that home throughout my marriage it's not uh like nobody has access to it so even without a prenup even just, without a prenup yeah okay and i mean that kind of <laughs> contradicts what i was saying earlier <laughs> <laughs> so no that, prenup but no. other ways <laughs> we, we got secured <laughs> yeah uh but it's, it's just i don't know it's yeah. kind of uh i, I don't want a way out like i want to fully commit yeah. to this person i want to like whenever anything comes up i want to be able to figure out how to get out of that situation without having like this easy out on the back of my mind oh i can yeah. just divorce you know yeah i respect yeah. that i mean it's such a such a big issue right now the divorce because i think yeah. people do come into it looking at at it just like oh wife girlfriend kind of same thing mm -hmm. but i think if you treat it differently where it's like oh this is my girlfriend and hopefully you're still loyal and like serious about it but once you take that next step it's a very serious next step yeah i think it does drive a little bit of a wedge between you mentally yeah Mm -hmm. so ultimately i decided like based on our situation based on legal advice i received that i just didn't want to go through with it yeah okay i don't want to talk too much about like this marriage thing but like <laughs> you're the one that needs to be talking about this oh, marriage thing yeah <laughs> we, we got one single jet on the podcast so i'm trying to i'm trying to learn more so like how do you feel your life has changed since since you were single to now you're married like how do you how do you feel your life has changed you are living with another person you have to give attention to that other person so you're not i guess as free with your yeah. time but now i feel like the time that i do have that's free time i'm able to just focus and lock in a lot more and take advantage of that free time whereas like mm -hmm. before i could wake up at 12 end up working till like 2 a.m yeah um like that's true. scroll Again, on tiktok for the middle portion. yeah it yeah, really exactly. does yeah and, and you like have to align with like her schedule like if she has any yeah. obligations work whatever it is you still have to like oh well we're gonna have dinner at the same time but like mm -hmm. I'm sure you set up certain rules like okay well we're gonna try to aim for this and spend this amount of time together i'm basically on the matrix schedule now a little <laughs> bit but bro i think before we can get it you can like understand the marriage thing you gotta go through the dating thing a little bit uh-huh so tj here is single Okay. Uh, I don't know if he's ready to mingle. Do you have any comments on that? Are you looking for somebody? I'm actually looking for somebody. <laughs> actually, actually. Right. What, do yeah. you have any criteria? Anything specific? Um, big, like a big heart. <laughs> a big heart and a female is, is very good. <laughs> but yeah. Okay. Um, if there's a, out of the like 0.001% of females watching this, 
<laughs> who are not my wife, my mom, or my sister. <laughs> if you have a big heart, tap in. Yeah. Tap in with me. I'm open. Um, I think a good <laughs> question open. is, um, did you have to use any of your clout or finances to secure this female? I mean, I'm sure a lot of here know about a certain somebody named Iman Ghazi. And he, I don't know if you guys have tapped in with his Instagram. He has a vault, apparently, okay. where he, like every month, he adds something to the vault. And the vault is certain items designated for his future wife oh another birkin added to the vault you know another patek added to the vault and this is like 100 plus thousand dollar like per item you know it's like massive assets in a way mm -hmm. if you want to look at them as, as as assets does one need to have a vault or something along those lines to to, to secure a, a female or a shorty in their life i feel like I haven't started enough education revolutions mm, okay. <laughs> to be able to fill up a vault <laughs> with Birkins and Patek, but hey, I respect it to each of their own. I, I think what we were talking about earlier, the, the prenup thing, mm -hmm. um, I think if you're flexing or just posting about a vault with Birkins and stuff like that, I think that's what you probably should consider <laughs> a prenup, you know? Like, um, do you feel like fame like made it harder to find someone like maybe like you know you're not that famous but like you, <laughs> you know like do you feel like it made it harder like we're, we're females like reaching out that were you know just kind of there for the for the worldly things or whatever i think like the the little bit of fame i do have it made things easier in some senses but obviously difficult in others yeah. i think like just the financial security obviously helps you keep a female mm -hmm. if she sees that hey you can provide a future for her it's not yeah. even about being a gold digger it's just yeah. common sense you know if she sees that you have a decent paying job it's the it's kind of the same thing yeah um, sure. but as far as actually like the initial stages of attracting a female uh -huh. i like just because you made a couple million online <laughs> i like it, that's not going to automatically get you all the females yeah, like that's if, what, that's if you, what i'm wondering yeah if you're just sitting behind your computer all day but you're making a lot of money that's not necessarily going to attract anybody you know yeah. Yeah. so i don't think that it makes as big of an impact as people believe it do yeah believe yeah. that it does okay that's good to know but um <laughs> another big topic i mean youtube was like pretty much your come up it's pretty much everything right i mean besides dropshipping but um, like what are you what are you doing besides YouTube now since it was such a big part of your life like it all of a sudden just goes away it's yeah, how, like, how much it's time crazy. did you spend uh, like per YouTube video I'm just curious like how much of that I mean when I was doing consistent uploads that's just your lifestyle like you're you're like full time yeah. you're going to sleep thinking about it you wake up thinking about it you spend the day working on it it's it's very much so a full time thing if you want to upload like high quality weekly uploads it's going to be uh, a full-time job, more than a full-time job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not a nine-to-five. It's TJ, a TJ taking notes right now for his <laughs> upcoming channel. <laughs> Matter of fact, but, um, but like, so what are you, like, what are you, what are you up to now? Like, it's... Well, I run, I do, I do still have the e-commerce side of my business. And yep. earlier this year, I actually transferred over from, like, running up dropshipping stores to building actual e-commerce brands. Wow. I still do product testing through dropshipping, but nowadays I'm actually, like, having... Uh, product samples sent into me. I'm like elaborating on the products. I'm creating brand equity. Mm -hmm. um, and that's been, honestly, that's been a little crazy. And you would think that, hey, now you have to manage, you, you have to manage inventory. You have to talk with China. You have to talk logistics. You have to run fulfillment. Yeah. You have marketing. You have ad creatives. You have all of this. And you would think that's a lot of work. But mm -hmm. compared to the work on YouTube, yeah, like it's honestly not that bad. Yeah. And that, that just goes to show like how much of a grind YouTube really is. Yeah. I, I, I know everyone talks about it, but I, I still think people who haven't tried it don't fully quite yeah. grasp right. the grind that it is. That's like true. I'm here saying that the e-commerce business is wow. so much easier than the YouTube side of things. Yeah. And it, it's also much more enjoyable. Like I had this, like going back to the fact that I'm not building anything with YouTube. Mm -hmm. I had this moment in uh, like three days into my honeymoon. I'm in Bora Bora with my <laughs> wife and I look down at my phone and like, I'm still making money. Yeah. Like I haven't done anything with this business for three days at that point, three, four days, but it's still running. Like things are still in place. And it's yeah. such a, it's such a beautiful feeling to where it's like, you're running a real business. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. you don't have to be there every day. You can take a day off without feeling like it's going to crumble. You can have that with YouTube yeah. where you know, I'm still making money if I'm not actively making a video, but if I'm not actively making a video, the business is dying. Let's be yeah. real. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So is, is that because of systems? Like with the e-commerce uh, model, um, you're setting up systems, you're setting up employees potentially, right? You're having yeah. people automate things. I, with YouTube, you can't really do that. Yeah, 100%. It's harder to do that, to let go of the creative control and like editing and sitting in front of a camera. Yeah, it's, it comes down to delegation. It's, you know, you have people in place for different jobs. Whereas with YouTube, the ultimate job and like the highest stress part of it, you can't outsource. Like you are yeah. the one that has to be in front of the camera. That's another good point. You can't outsource. Um, I did notice that you, you pretty much edited all, like all your videos, right? Yeah, up until the very end. Like I tried out a few editors, yeah. but it was still like what? Why did you never like outsource? Because I mean, editing for me is like the most like time consuming. So I'm kind of just wondering, like, like why haven't you outsourced, especially you know with your income? I mean, maybe moving forward, if I continue doing YouTube, that's something I'll probably yeah. look into. But for right now, or my mindset throughout those three, four years was my whole sense of humor. I feel like came out throughout the editing yeah. like if you just watch the raw thing, video yeah. it's it's kind of goofy like it's it's dry but yeah. then when i would go in and implement my sense of humor through the memes that's mm -hmm. what would make a, a be a heza video a be a heza video yeah exactly i'm curious how the audience reacts to a podcast because it's a little different from that you know long, it's long form no no, have, no subway you, surfers no, none of that <laughs> well no we can put a yeah. subway surfer under here <laughs> we can do that, yeah. <laughs> but you know it's like you're not relying on all the editing and cuts yeah. and like memes because some people usually when I'm listening to podcasts, I start it, you know, I have YouTube premium, so I just close it up and I'm not even watching it for the most part. I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of people watching this or listening to this right now that aren't actively watching it. So you can't like yeah. rely on editing in jokes and editing in the fun and the excitement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have to actually have it in you. <laughs> I don't know if I do, bro. That's We're going to have thing. to watch if this is if this is up, maybe like it's it's good enough to, to yeah, be yeah. episode 1, but that's that's something I'm genuinely worried about cuz with YouTube, I have I have all the time in the world. I can do as many takes as I want. Yeah. I can put in make it funny and you know, in post, but with this yeah. it is yeah. very raw and yeah. it's not a side of me that I think I've ever like showed on camera. I don't think I really have any yeah. videos out there where they're not heavily edited. Yeah. And by the way, this is first run too. Like this is just we're yeah. going raw, like right off the bat. And I th I feel like it'd be weird like, if if we already had this conversation once, and then you're doing it for a second or third time just to get it better. Yeah. I think it would be even worse, you know. So I think it's a it's something you have yeah. to get in like first try, um, just to have the authenticity. Because if you don't, then I, like it just doesn't work. It doesn't so I guess authentic. we'll see. We'll see. And I think the authenticity out. really shines through the camera. You can't fool the audience. Yeah. 100%. So you're saying this has to be one take, huh? Yeah. 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 Exactly. Right. Well, we did. We're like twenty minutes in. We didn't even introduce each other. Yeah. Uh, I should probably kind of give a rundown of what's going on. Mm -hmm. Sure. So I'm Biaheza. I think I'll be taking on kind of like the host role. To my right here, we have Max. You've appeared in some of my videos. Uh, if if I can introduce you, I would introduce you as an e-commerce mogul who's okay. turned into real estate mogul. Okay. Made some moves in real estate and now runs a cash printer boring <laughs> cash printer boring business yeah is that fair yeah I, i'll take it i mean i think some of your audience might know me from the sam satoshi thing that's true the uh, little scammer that you ran up it. and created me to be uh which is not something i'm super super proud of you know but hopefully we can disassociate from that little by little but yeah i mean i do have some experience i think that's how we met like five years ago through e-commerce, you know, I used to drop ship too. Um, mm. I'm still not counting it out. Maybe, you know, we'll see if there's the right product to come back into. But yeah, I did move into a more boring business, like you like to say, um, more like service-based local business, um, which I'm sure we'll get into as these mm. episodes go on. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and I mean, you're kind of downplaying the e-commerce. You made some pretty big moves in e-commerce <laughs> working with A-list celebrities, such as, but not limited to, Soldier Boy. <laughs> yeah. yeah For happened. those who aren't familiar, that's Big Draco. <laughs> yeah, Big Draco. Yeah, I mean, it was it was good. I mean, I did have some success with it, um, but I did eventually experience some, um, like, burnout in a way and just mm. repeating that. Pro I, had a, I had a successful store, basically, and I, it, it was successful enough to have some, like, influencer marketing, Facebook ads, all that, um, working with Soldier Boy, like... Soldier. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was fun, uh, but then replicating that was like a little bit difficult for me. I, I, I'm more, I like being in the service industry. Like, I, I think I was born into like sales and I don't want to just do sales, but with the service, we basically do flooring and we like sell product and the installation and the service mm -hmm. of it. So it's kind of both, 
together, which like just brings me a lot of fulfillment, honestly. You just have a servant's heart, huh? Yeah, basically. That's beautiful. Basically. Yeah. Um, and then to your left, we have your big bro, TJ. <laughs> big brother. Big bro. <laughs> big brother, TJ. You've appeared in some videos. Uh, well, are you are you still running the e-commerce store we built up in the? Yes, I am. I'm still running it. You're up. still running it now. This is I'm Give actually shocked. So day. for those who aren't familiar, we did a video where I helped TJ start a dropshipping store, and we revealed everything. We revealed the product they were selling, like A to Z, the website, everything. Yeah, everything. And so after the video went live, we saw some replicas, but you were able to still continue selling pro the same exact product, same exact website to this day. There were so many replicas and um, like right away, the sales obviously dropped a little bit, but I mean, till this day, I'm still profitable. Um, and people still ask me like, yo, how are you still profitable? Like I tried it myself. There's like hundreds of stores and I'm not sure myself, but <laughs> it's working. So I'm not going to change anything. But um, that just goes to show that like there really isn't that much competition. If you think about out of all the people who viewed the video, yeah. maybe like 1% actually tried yeah. it. Then I, below that, like half a percent tried it for more than a week. Below yeah, that, exactly, yeah, yeah it, it just narrows down to so much where you don't exactly. really have all that much competition yeah. when you really think yeah. about it, if you're dedicated. Yeah, someone DM'd me actually, and they made like 50K after the video dropped. They ran Same the, product? Same product, they made wow. like 50K, so. Wow. Yeah, that was nice. That was cool. <laughs> now, before we continue, we do have to interrupt today's episode to once again thank the sponsor, AutoDS, your all-in-one e-commerce solution, baby. Again, if you think about it, they are one of the top dropshipping order fulfillment platforms, right? So naturally, they have a really good understanding and all the necessary data to determine what products are currently selling because they're the ones delivering the product. And so they compile all of that data and offer it to their users in a winning product section of their platform where you can see those products. You can see what's currently selling. Once you narrow in on a product, you can use the TikTok ad spy tool they have to find different advertisements for that product. They then can create a pre-built AI e-commerce store for you. And once the orders start rolling in, you can use them to automatically fulfill your orders. No need to track order tracking numbers manually. AutoDS can handle everything for you automatically and provide you with some of the quickest shipping times. So your customers can be happy enough to potentially become repeat customers, meaning your ad spend dollars go much, much further than just the first purchase. So feel free to check them out using the link in the description. And now, back to the episode at least when you go and look online why do you think that the people who have success with drop shipping are always young hmm. what why do you think that? it is because they, feel they, like it they have, they have more time risk. like and and risk yeah time and risk i don't know yeah i feel like once you my theory is that once you have like a stable job you're out of college yeah it's kind of tough like you get comfortable. You get comfortable. You're fed. Like you have the income. Exactly. Whereas when you're a young bull, you got all the time you're in the hung. world. Yeah. Testosterone is, is going to Testosterone the Testosterone is pumping. <laughs> like, Liver king. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. I feel like you're just going to go after it so much more and you have the time. And maybe it's also some naivety. Like if some of these older guys, they'll see the video, but they're going to think that it's fake. Yeah. Whereas like yeah. some of the younger guys will go for it and they'll see that it's actually real yeah. and end yeah. up having And also like excitement it. too. I remember getting my first few sales yeah. in, in e-commerce and it's like, realistically, I made like 20 bucks for the day, mm -hmm. but I was more excited than my biggest deal yet. You know, like it's just, there's something about it when you get your first money coming in from yeah. an online store, you know, it's just, there's something about it. I think like once you get that and you kind of build off of that, there's something about it. But if you're already, you know, have a full time job, you have like, you know, whether it's minimum wage or whatever, you're still making a couple of grand a month. And it's do you drop that and pursue this other thing? And it's like, oh, even if you do both at the same time, but the the, the dropshipping store give, brings you in twenty dollars in that day, there's no excitement because you made one hundred sixty or whatever working a minimum wage job. So, yeah, that's a good point. I think it's I don't know if there's any substance in that, <laughs> but I think that's part of it, too. Or you get a little bit of jaded to like seeing a hundred dollars a day. Whereas yeah. if you see that with dropshipping and you've never made money, you're going to go after that. Yeah. You're going to double down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's but it, sure. but it really is crazy. And the age keeps on getting younger and younger. I'm seeing like 15 year olds. Yeah. There's some up. crazy TikToks yeah. out there. Yeah. <laughs> and I believe it. Yeah. Honestly, like at this point with all the information out there, like I do believe that you could be 16 and making, I mean, I did it at 17. So it's yeah, like, yeah, easily. yeah. And before, like when you started, when I started, it was not as, there was not that much information. I mean, there was, but it, I mean, you gotta, you gotta give it up to the OGs, yeah. the, the Hayden Bowles, the, yes, the Sebastians of the, of the industry. hundred um, percent. Hopefully we can have them on the pod. That, yeah. That'd like some of the OGs. I mean, like, bro, I owe everything to some of these OGs yeah. who yeah. actually showed that it's possible yeah. and at a young age. Yeah. Like credit, credit words do. Yeah, for um, sure. 
like how, how do you feel dropshipping has changed from you know 2016 2018 to now 2023 getting into 2024 like how do you feel it's changed i mean yeah it, it's it might be more difficult you might have to have a prettier website ads are a little more expensive so you have to have better ads but it's still possible now you have more information now you have yeah. better tools now so you, you have you new think, ad you platforms. think it's harder now right just i different, don't know no? it's just different because it's like now you don't have to know how to do insane you don't have to have a marketing strategy yeah. where you're um where you need to know targeting or anything like that nowadays you put up a viral TikTok as an advertisement do broad targeting and that can print exactly so yeah. in a way sure it's more difficult but it's, it's different i guess it's just different yeah, it changed i mean a back lot. in the, like the free plus shipping method that worked so <laughs> you well tapped in with that, huh? i tapped in with that heavy <laughs> and uh i don't know if you guys remember tj's probably a little young but the the red um swimsuit yeah, went yeah insanely yeah. insanely viral that. on like instagram and it was literally just oh free swimsuit like repost this whatever there was something else besides mm -hmm. just free plus shipping but it was essentially free plus shipping right yeah it, it was repost the swimsuit on your feed and you'll receive a code for like a free swimsuit all they the person had to do was pay for shipping yeah. shipping is 10 bucks yeah. yeah this person can get it to them yeah. for five bucks yeah they're making five bucks and every went, time someone reposts yeah. it went mega viral too. yeah it was like, everywhere and my whole people Instagram. replicated that for like the next year you know yeah. i i tapped in with that you know free chain but then you yeah. get whatever like whatever it is but now you can't do that so i don't know if it's but now you harder. can put up a viral organic instagram or viral organic TikTok, yeah exactly. and have that pop off and you have so it's just different i think exactly. it's just different it's different it's, it's evolved but do you know who was behind the the red swimsuit it wasn't one of your boys sebastian mm, i don't Welch. think so it was it was somebody more low-key and they kind of I, I feel like i saw something but don't quote me on this it was yeah. more like they graduated from that and they made like a real brand off of it but i'm not sure mm. Yeah, I don't uh, we'd have to do some way. research. You might want to pull that out. because yeah, I don't remember <laughs> at all. But I mean, yeah. I, I was young at the time. But um, uh, you mentioned it briefly, um, burnout. Uh, I yeah. wanted to ask you, three years of YouTube consistently, how do you deal or how did you deal with burnout? Or, I mean, maybe you didn't deal with that at all. You kind of stopped. But I mean, the, the burnout was definitely there. I think what kept me going is, like, I probably wanted to quit for the first time, maybe like a year in. Like mm -hmm. I was kind of already done with it. Like I can't take this any longer, yeah. but <laughs> if I'm going to be frank, I just wasn't in a position financially yeah. where I could do that and still be okay. Yeah. How, how was that first year for some of those that don't know? Like, yeah. how, like just, you start the YouTube channel, did you start going, going with it? Are you making any money? Are you yeah. working other jobs? Well, I started YouTube back in middle school. So I started mm. making skateboarding, skateboarding videos. videos yeah. Maybe yeah. I'll unprivate some of them on my main <laughs> channel. I feel like that'd be fun. So people can see that nugget. origin. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they date back to like when I was in middle school. So yeah. that's, I don't know, 10 years ago. So I've been uh, in the YouTube game for a while, but mm -hmm. where I started this new wave of uploads, um, was when I had my first success in drop shipping and I wanted to hop on and start yapping about it. Yeah. <laughs> so that ended up uh, i think that was end of 2017 end of 2018 maybe what was your first success my first success it was like a i was running instagram pages at the time instagram theme pages theme pages faceless instagram pages is what they're <laughs> called now uh but i ended up using those that network of pages that i built up to run my dropshipping store so i had free marketing mm -hmm. and so i made a video about that it got some traction i kept on making videos and like the thing about my initial year and the reason why i think i was able to continue making videos is because i didn't care about the money i was making all my money from e-commerce yeah so i could just make these videos for fun <clears throat> like i wouldn't the reason why i wouldn't take on brand deals early on is because i just didn't need it you know yeah. like it didn't make sense compared to what i was making with drop shipping yeah. so i was able to go at it for like a whole year uh just for funsies wow so, so like how do you feel like money um, maybe fame, but mainly money. How do you feel that like that changed your relationships with family or like with friends? Honestly, it's as far you got to move different now. You know, <laughs> move different, maybe a little bit. But as far as my family goes, I mean, I have like a, a super close knit family who's yeah. just always been so incredibly supportive mm -hmm. that it just it didn't really change all that much as far as family goes. Mm -hmm. As far as friends, yeah, you, did you have to cut anyone off? Uh, I mean, I, I feel like I have a pretty good radar to where 
I can see when someone's approaching me and like what their intentions are. Yeah. So it was, it was, a, and I'm not out there flexing. I'm not at the clubs. I'm not yeah. driving around in a Lambo, you know? So I, I just, my lifestyle doesn't attract those kind of yeah. people yeah. like the cloud chasers and the gold diggers. Mm -hmm. So I didn't, I honestly didn't really have any negative experiences with that. That's good. Um, yeah. Um, so, I mean, you came from a, a, a lower class family. Right. What are you trying to say? <laughs> did you or did you not? <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I, so, I, it's, I don't want to say the sob story, you know, but yeah, okay, I, yeah, yeah apartments, but, the whole nine yards, yeah, food stamps. Yeah, apartments, yeah, food stamps, whatever. But like, um, you, you make what, 30K from dropshipping, right? First month. Um, you tell your mom, like, oh, I made 30K. Like, what, what was her initial reaction? Like, you know, <laughs> like, kind of like, what, what was that like? Well, before Did you tell them from the, from the yeah, start? before the 30 K, uh, they could see that I was hustling, bro. Like before the 30 K I was on Instagram running these theme pages. Yeah. Like I was grinding on these pages. So I was already starting to bring in like two grand a month here, two grand a month there. Yeah. And that slowly built up and built up to where, I mean, it was a big jump from like a few grand to 30 grand, yeah. but they already saw that I was doing, I had some online motion going. So yeah. it wasn't an absolute shock out of nowhere. Like, yo, where, where'd you get this bread? Yeah. But I told them pretty early on, um, uh, just cause I needed help with taxes. You know? yeah. So I was like, do you guys know anybody that can help yeah. me with that? Um, wow. so yeah, they were, they were supportive of That's everything. Good. Yeah. parents so, have to sign off on the bank account and whatnot yeah i had wow. to go i had to bring my mom everywhere to open up the business to open up the <laughs> lc i'm just running around because you mom. were 17 at the time right i was 17 so yeah. you were of age but um my fault i lost my train of thought no, it's all good. but i think we were, we were talking about burnout and stuff like that i know again i'm sure people notice too there, there's oh, yeah. a certain pattern of creators where you hit a million subs and then something kind of happens what was that feeling like? I mean, yeah, I mean, I knew it was coming, you know, <laughs> I do. I even talked about it in one of my videos where it's such a common thing where you grind and grind and grind to get to that million subscriber mark. And once you do the 10 million subscriber mark is just so far away that it's like, you don't even, it's, it's all, it almost doesn't feel like a realistic goal. So you tend mm -hmm. to achieve this huge milestone mm -hmm. and now you don't have a realistic goal ahead of you. And you just kind of lose motivation. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I thought you wouldn't fall for that because I remember when you hit a million subscribers, you we didn't celebrate it, we didn't do anything. Yeah. So we had to surprise you a little. You know, bring, you threw me a little party. I appreciate cakes, that. I still balloons. think about that. <laughs> <laughs> Might have to throw up a pic of that. You know, but Got we had a cute little cake for you. But I was like, oh well, this guy does it, it didn't phase him. You know, so maybe he's going yeah. for the ten or the hundred. You know, <laughs> the ten. But. Um, I'm not, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. Just mm -hmm. kind of your priorities change. Uh, I'm just curious how that, you know, transpires. Like once TJ hits 100K, is he, is he going to the moon or? I'm going to the club first. <laughs> <laughs> Man. That's funny. No, I mean, I think maybe it was my mistake was even though I knew that it was coming, like this, this battle, this test, uh, mm -hmm. I still put a lot of like, I still put a lot of weight onto getting the golden play button and getting mm -hmm. that million subscriber mark. I mean, I remember like two, a, the year and a half before leading up to it, like o almost on a daily basis, I'm calculating, okay, if I get this many subscribers <laughs> per day, I can reach it in nine months. Okay. I can reach it in eight months. I just put so much weight onto yeah. getting the golden play button. So for you, I'd recommend do not put that much weight, but I think so it also be like more nonchalant about it. Basically. There mm -hmm. you go. Perfect. But also, I think it was where I was in life. Uh, like I was already a few years deep into it and I was seeing what's possible with TikTok ads. Yeah. I was getting married. So it just kind of seemed like a natural time for me to take a yeah. step back. And at that point I had the finances uh, yeah. to yeah, I do think so. It's a little different because you're not just a YouTuber. Um, you know, I'm pretty sure you were making 1 million type subscriber youtube channel money through other ventures mm -hmm. yeah so it wasn't like you were going up to this goal with just the finances in mind it was more like you already had that from the drop shipping the e-commerce side so i think it's a little bit of a different case study than like yeah. normal creators but you still fell captive <laughs> to that trap <laughs> yeah and i mean I, and that's that might be the problem where like i eventually did start treating youtube more of a job where it really started from like a very pure place a place of just I'm doing this for fun. I'm just doing this to show people what's possible the way the early uh, early dropshipper showed me what's possible. Mm -hmm. And then eventually yeah. as like 
YouTube and these like crazy deals started coming in, yeah, it became more and more of a job, and maybe that's what made it yeah. less yeah. fun. But but also the not just the money, the the deals coming in, things like that. I think, I mean, I'm speaking for you right here, but the fans and stuff, you know, people are expecting a video. I was one of those people, yeah. you know. <laughs> 12 p.m. on a Saturday, like, where's the video? You know, you're, you're a couple minutes late. Where's the video? Well, I'm stressing out, you know, um, especially if it's somebody that puts you on in a way, you know, like this guy put me on drop shipping, you know, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden he's not posting. So I can see how that affects people personally. You know, it's yeah. like your mentor, your, the, the guy that puts yeah. you on your career. The idol. He's I don't stop posting, posting. You know, I'm in distress right now, bro. I'm, I'm super <laughs> sad about that. Yeah, I, I mean, it's like, maybe that's also part of it the fact that now i have a million bosses that like yeah. a million people that uh have to be held accountable in front of whereas yeah, when yeah. you're drop shipping nobody knows what you're doing yeah when you're just low key about exactly. it it's it's a completely different lifestyle you're living um I, I wanted to ask like how is your youtube journey i mean i think i followed you at around like 20k subscribers all right can, yep. can we talk about the first tj to be a hazard dms <laughs> is that public information or no? Or are I we don't have, have this them. Part you deleted out? them. Huh? I delete. I didn't send them, bro. <laughs> can we reveal that? Um, I can tell what you what you I say? I can tell you what I sent. Um, it was like you had like 40k. Okay. That's what I was talking about. Like you went from like 20k to like 60k over like overnight. Um, but yeah, so I DM'd you. I had I had a theme page going, and I was like, and it wasn't growing. That that's, it wasn't growing at all. <laughs> I was like, yo, like how do I make it pop? Like it was like a whole big fan, bro. <laughs> big fan. Like, yo, like nice video. Like how do I, how do I make this pop? It's kind of not growing, and um, no that was about it. And then about like three months later, it did end up popping. Um, so that was good, but you didn't respond to my DM. So, and Sorry, I, I mean, they just they just started coming in pretty heavily. But yeah. as far as Instagram pages, it's kind of making a comeback now. It's called like. Faceless, faceless Instagram yeah. pages, wow. but they're theme pages. And I guess yeah. people are making money with it. And it's actually really interesting because the people that stuck with theme pages, like some of these guys now own like these huge media networks. They're yeah. essentially yeah. media executives. Yeah. And like they've been able to get these huge exits. Like I'm hearing eight figure exits for wow. some yeah. theme pages. That's wow. crazy. And I guess it, it makes sense. Like if you're the owner, I want to actually get in contact with some of these people and maybe have them on the podcast. But if you're the owner of like a 30 million followed Instagram page, it kind of makes sense that you can have an eight figure exit from that. Yeah. yeah. But like about YouTube, like going back to that, like what was your like, what was your come up? You know, like how did that feel for you? Going you, from, from 20K to 100K. You then, say that it happened overnight, but well, to uh, me, it really didn't feel of like course, it. Of course, of course. I mean... <laughs> Like it didn't for you to me no it felt like a slow it felt like a slow grind throughout the whole thing like i don't okay. think i had one moment where everything changed yeah, yeah. I, I, maybe i had a video that pop off yeah but then next week i'm trying to make something similar to that and, and then, next and it's, week i need to make exactly. another video and it's yeah. a more low because you can't match that exact i just yeah, yeah i feel like like i was checking your channel and then like one day you were at 20k and the next day you were at you know 60. you so, just you just not but, a true yeah loyal exactly has a subscriber bro so so it, it, wasn't, it, it wasn't really like just like like this it was i don't kinda, feel that it was i think it was just more like this right because yeah. i remember even like before the million like you would be hustling week after week and i know what you're talking about i, yeah. I didn't me personally i'm not in the youtube game at all i'm not in the creator space mm -hmm. um so I didn't understand it until I saw it where you were just, oh, I have a video to drop this Saturday yeah. and you're recording for a few days, this and that. And then like Wednesday, you're saying no to things like, oh, we're going to the gym. Are we hitting this? Are we doing that? Yeah. Like, no, I have to lock in and edit my video. And then yeah. you, you check on Brody and he's at the office at like 2 a.m. <laughs> editing a video did for it, like two nights in a row. Did it really take you that long like, to, to create a video? Did it really take that long? Like, I mean, I guess you, you uploaded weekly, right? Yeah. But here's the thing. I guess I could have done it quicker, but it's a creative process, bro. Exactly. I saw myself as like an artist. Yeah. You know, I can't register the creative process. Yeah. And maybe that's why I'm sure that's why I couldn't. It didn't feel sustainable for me just because I didn't yeah. delegate. I, I'm sure if early on I got somebody to come on as an editor, like I yeah. bring them up, they work with me for a while. Maybe I would get uh, those extra two yeah. days every week that I yeah. spent editing. Maybe I would get that back, but then you still have that aspect of it's a hamster wheel. You yeah. upload on Saturday, you're done. You got to upload again. Exactly. What would you say was like the most time consuming thing? Like was the editing or was it just like getting that, the results from the challenge or, or what? I guess it was the editing, but the editing part I kind of enjoyed. Like I enjoyed sitting down. I already know the video is a lock. I have the video. There's nothing I need to do, but yeah. sit down, have, have a snack, have some coffee and just enjoy yeah. the editing process. I think the, 
that wasn't the stressful part. Although it was time consuming, it wasn't stressful. The stressful part is thinking what's going to pop next week. What's exactly. going to pop the week after. Yeah. It's just kind of the brainstorming aspect and then executing on those ideas. Yeah. I'm just thinking of what if you ever have a moment where you shoot a video, you record it and then you're looking at it, you're, you're about to lock in for the next two days to edit it. And you're like, man, I don't know if this is a good video and you still have to edit it. Yeah. Have you ever had that? Um, I, I try to really save those kind of videos with the editing, mm -hmm. but I have had, um, like a couple of videos were like, ah, this is just goofy. I'm not going to, I'm sure, it. I'm sure the vibe is different. Like you sit down and you're like super excited. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Banger video. You already know it before you edit it. I know this is going to pop. This is like super good. And I'm sure there's others where you're like, shoot, I got to save this with the editing. I'm sure the energy yeah. is different while you're editing for those two days. I would know when it would be a banger when I would be editing, editing the video. You, you watch it back yeah. and you're like, you're hyped up. I play it back yeah. and I get so caught up in the video where yeah. like, I forget why I even played it back. And that would happen multiple times. Does that actually like, work though? Because sometimes I, I look back and it's kind of like, I'm hyped up because it's like late night or something like that or it's some, something <laughs> something else other than the bro's video. been dopamine detoxing so yeah. hard that <laughs> yeah. hyped yeah. up over the editing. yeah something like not, that not I would just get so sucked into the video yeah. that like I would watch every time I would play back I would watch it the whole entire thing when yeah. other times I would just like okay yeah. I played it back a little alright let me edit this let me yeah. edit that yeah I feel that um, <laughs> what, do you, what advice do you have for up and coming YouTubers for up and coming YouTubers or, or uh, like just advice for you know people that are kind of doing that stuff and stuff that you feel like you made a mistake in doing well i think that's two separate questions for the first one number one piece of advice i can give to anybody with with uh, just about anything you have to take action you have to take the first step mm -hmm. nothing happens unless you take the first step once yep. you take the first step you can build on top of that yeah you can see what you did wrong you can improve on that you can improve on that further and further until you have something that's successful and that's a working product yep. If you don't take the first step, if you're going to get into this analysis paralysis, nothing's going to happen. Yeah. So the big thing is, is just make that first video, hit upload on the first video, get some feedback, then make, you know, then improve and improve on that. Video, yeah, yeah but, as, but as far as mistakes I've made, I think honestly it would have to be the lack of delegation. Like what I, what I, does that mean? Uh, big word. <laughs> big word delegation, the lack of... Uh, outsourcing certain tasks. Mm, Do you okay. think you have that naturally? Like you have a problem issue with doing that, or is that something you grew from just sticking for it to it for so long, and then you had a hard time letting go? Or are you a more controlling person where you can't let go just right off the bat? I think it's maybe a little bit of both, but it's like you're not going to get taught delegation in school, you know. Yeah. And like I don't really come from a family of business owners, so I didn't really have anybody to teach me these lessons of oh, you need to delegate, or it's not going to work out. Yeah. Um, did, did you have anyone that came up with you or like, did you have a best friend that kind of, you kind of brought to the top with you or were you kind of just a, a lone soldier? Uh, I mean, I was like, and I still am to my close friends and family. Like I'm open, come at me with like, if you need tips, if you need advice with anything, I was always yeah. open, but I'm not going to start, uh, I'm not going to start a brand new store for someone, you know? Well, no, I'm saying more so like somebody that you would talk to every single day like yo this is like how my, how my store is doing and he's doing the same thing basically that's that's kind no, of especially nowadays it's a little different but the e-commerce space at the time that i was coming up it was a log bro you're not dropping your winning products it's you're, you're zipped up yeah. you cannot be spilling winning products so it was tough to find somebody in the same industry uh that you can talk about yeah. those kind of things that you know isn't gonna rip you off but eventually yeah. I did uh, like get an office and there's like a lot of creative people in the mm -hmm. office space. Yep. So I did have that um, yeah. social aspect to the yeah, come up so a little bit. But yeah, but it's but it's interesting going back to what I was saying about like people coming at me for help. I can usually always like just through the DMs I get, I can see who's going to succeed and who isn't because yeah. some people will come at me and they'll say, hey, can you help me make money online? Yeah. Hey, I've been thinking about drop shipping. I've been th watching this person. Do you think this is a good idea? And then others will come at me and say, hey, I have this store. What do you think? Can you give me any advice? Go back, going back to my DM. <laughs> what did I say? That, that was a WDM. And now exactly. look at you years later. Uh, you have a successful yeah. drop shipping store. Let's go. You Let's know, go. Selling female there products. You, there you go. That's the, the proof <laughs> is in the pudding. <laughs> exactly. Um, but going kind of off topic, um, like, do you, do you currently have any like YouTuber friends, like fi finance YouTuber friends that you kind of just chill, hang out with? Well, I, I don't live in like a YouTuber hub. I do talk to them through like social media and whatnot, yeah. of course, but I just, and, and this is the benefit of starting the podcast. A lot of these people who I only know of online, we finally have an excuse to actually yeah. get together and exactly. chop it up 
This is, this is like a yeah, huge. I'm not. Beautiful. I'm not just in this for the blue chew sponsorships. <laughs> <laughs> like I think the the networking aspect of this and networking is a little corny. Just the meeting people aspect of this is yeah. going to be a really good time. Exactly. Even if this doesn't get that many views. Yeah. Like it'll still give you an excuse to meet up with these people. Exactly. That's, I mean, I don't know what your goal with is it because you have such a di different perspective. Like you're like coming from at the top of the YouTube game. You already, are in this for the blue chew ads. <laughs> nah, no, 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 he can't be doing that. <laughs> Anybody else come at us though, but. <laughs> Better help. No, but um, what I was trying to say is, it's just a conversation at the end of the day. And I, I kind of, before we started this, I was pretty nervous, I'm not gonna lie, just sitting down, like there's a couple of cameras looking at us, there's lights, there's whatever, there's mics. Um, I know there's gonna be at least a couple hundred people watching. Okay. <laughs> right off rip, so it's like, there's a little bit of pressure with that, and I have zero experience with that. But um, I think it's just if you look at it as just a conversation, yeah. Um, even if this completely flops, like at the end of the day, we're having a conversation with the boys, the boys only pod. If we bring somebody on that any one of us kind of knows or would like to know, you're just having a conversation and we're yeah. just recording it for the audience and mm -hmm. they could join along too. Like that's what I like about podcasts when I'm listening to podcasts. You just hear boys chopping it up and you're kind of <laughs> like, like the along banter. there with I them. I like you the know? banter, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so. And I mean, it's a. I, I, I saw a really interesting tweet that said you should create the kind of content you want to consume and if I look at like the last five years of the content that I've consumed by a landslide the number one piece of content I consume is podcasts like it's unhealthy bro like mm -hmm. I'm up yeah. up in the morning I play a podcast when I'm showering when I'm brushing teeth down to you put me on this nope. which is, <laughs> this is not good we were in LA for someone's bachelor strip Mm. And so we were sharing a house and you played a podcast before you fell asleep <laughs> and you put me on I'm this guilty. feature that pauses it on your iPhone app 30 minutes in, it pauses it. So it's a perfect thing. Man. You play a podcast for 30 minutes it's as you horrible, fall asleep. Horrible idea. I mean, maybe with our podcast, go ahead and do that. But <laughs> any other one, please don't go fall asleep. To a that destroyed my dopamine. Like <laughs> I had to. I had to really go I'm back. dependent on that now to fall asleep. Yeah, I couldn't fall asleep yeah. like that, like real. I need Joe Rogan whispering yeah, in my ear. Yeah, I'm saying like, have you ever tried detoxing or just letting go for like a day? <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously. Bro I, gets absolutely no sleep. He's tossing <laughs> and turning the whole night. <laughs> obviously, I'm slightly over exaggerating. Like, I'll have days where I'm just not able to do that. Uh, but I don't really see it as an issue because ultimately podcasts I mean, are a benefit. A lot of people say that it's not an issue, but it really is an issue. The first step of fixing a problem is identifying yeah, that you have a problem. Ex exactly. No, but I think podcasts are generally very beneficial, like yeah. down from you're going to learn something new to just improving like the way you speak and improving yeah. your sense of humor. Like yeah. you can take a uh, little yeah. social yeah. cues and whatnot from different people. Yeah. Yeah. I don't no, see it as a negative thing. It's like Instagram reels, you know, like the big <laughs> thing, it's like I watch for an hour and then I think back like, what did I learn? And it's yeah. like, I'm just watching like Smurf memes or something <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah, you know? and it's a couple of seconds, a um, thousand different topics. I'm not really like a podcast viewer myself. I'm, I'm younger than you guys. You guys are pushing 30, <laughs> but not that young, um, bro. <laughs> would you say that like, if you look back from yesterday, like w would you say what you learned from the podcast, if you learned anything, would you say it was worth the one hour of your time or whatever? I, I think it, yeah, because what would you be doing if you weren't watching that podcast? And for me personally, I don't yeah. watch podcasts. I think I already said that. I mostly just listen to them. Yeah, so if yeah. I'm driving yeah. for that's, 45 that's kind of, minutes, yeah. I could have been listening to music the whole time and like I had exactly. a great time, but yeah, exactly. I got nothing out of it. But if I listen to a podcast for 45 exactly. minutes, and it depends on what you're listening to. If you're listening to just like gossip, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, like BFF's pod or something, then <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that's any benefit. But if you're listening to anything of any value, and you get at least one point out of it, then I think it's And that's worth the thing. It. You're usually doing something while you listen to podcasts. You're exactly, at the gym, yeah. you're doing some chores. Yeah. That's but good. as far as like, do I regret it? Bro, YouTube and podcasts is what made me who I am. Like mm -hmm. I wouldn't have my business without YouTube. Even the e-commerce side of things, just seeing people succeed on YouTube and seeing people talk about different things, that's I, I was able to see that, see what's possible, and mm -hmm. through that, like build up different things. So maybe I should tap in with podcasts. Probably the the mandatory ten x your ten x your income. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but um, another question I had was I noticed like you don't really have any collabs. You went on the ice coffee hour with with Gra Graham Stefan. Um, but besides <laughs> that, I mean, did you ever do any other collabs? Well, I th not really. Um, maybe I had like very minor ones. I think. Why, a, why haven't you done more? A big portion of that was. 
was just me being an introvert. Like I was genuinely, even for the Ice Coffee Hour podcast, like bro, I was so nervous. It was insane. And yeah. I was younger, like given I'm like 17, 18, 19. I don't want to start no beef with Graham or anything, but that setup they had you in was a little <laughs> nightmarish. The library. <laughs> I just Nightmare remember podcast. bros in the middle. They have both of the, of the hosts on the either corner like behind a table it was a little intimidating i i don't even blame you though yeah i guess i mean i'm <laughs> pulling up i'm like super scared and then i yeah. get into like this positioning where i'm just having two two yeah. older and not, they were just starting to right so yeah so they were training this is no disrespect but no. <laughs> I, i'm getting drilled about my income you know and i don't have editing control over yeah. this yeah. podcast so it, it was kind of scary i think but. environment's important like even again me i was really nervous coming into this but I'm feeling pretty good, pretty relaxed. I feel like we're flowing. We'll, we'll see how, how it is after we take a look at it. But mm -hmm. I think environment has a, you know, we have a fireplace going. We have the nice oh, yeah. comfy couch. I think, I think that's really important. I think now, um, now their setup is fire. Like they have the table, yeah. they have a specific room. It's clean, and yeah. I think also like seating is very important. Like normally I think the, the positions we're gonna have is again, host, we have a co-host and we have TJ as Producer. on the boys only pods. He'll sit in as a full on like uh, one of the boys, one of the boys. Yep. But normally I think we'll have him as a Jamie role from mm -hmm. Joe Rogan or like as a producer role. Well, he'll be off to the side pulling stuff up. Uh, we'll still have a camera on him. But I think this kind of setup really works. Whereas if we have three hosts yeah. and another guest, yeah. one person is going to be left out. We've seen yeah. it on Impulsive. It's, <laughs> it, it's just you're bound to fail. Yeah. yeah. And it also needs to be like this where. I'm the guest and I can address both of you at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I believe the Nelk podcast, they have just kind of everyone, though. They have like three, four or five people. Well, they have, I think they have boys only all the time. But even when they're doing even interviews, then, it's like Bradley, Steiny, Kyle, well, Salim, people like, it's like, <laughs> bro knows everybody. It's just like everyone. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't really consume podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> bro named off every producer. And <laughs> I've, I've watched a few. I've watched a few. But I mean, I guess they're more kind of like like banter, kind of more jokes, and when the when the whole boys are just like kind of in a circle, you can throw more jokes around, I guess. Yeah, oh, I but, think I think I mean, yeah. You just have to make the guests comfortable, and right now we're treating Vlad as the guest, mm -hmm. which I think are you, this are is a good setup. I feel very comfortable, and again, like if I had somebody else on this side, I don't know how I would do it. Yeah, then you have to like turn around because honestly, I haven't even been looking at TJ, but like awkward, we're yeah. boys, and it's fine. Like we're asking you the yeah, questions, yeah, yeah. but I think if if this is me and you, mm -hmm. and like or like a guest than me and it'd be a little little goofy you know so hopefully yeah, we can get uh hopefully we can i, I want to see how difficult it is to get people on the podcast yeah hopefully we can get some good guests i want to start off with some of the finance guys in the finance youtube space and maybe eventually grow beyond that who would you want to have on yeah i mean that's a good question i kind of was that was thinking of just asking the audience like drop your comments mm -hmm. see, to see who they want to have on do because i know most of your audience is finance based but do they want to see a lot of finance or do they want to see more of other people, you know? Mm -hmm. um, dream guest, gotta be Iman. I mean, we got, I'm <laughs> flying out to Dubai, bro. <laughs> Let's make it happen. <laughs> Iman, tap in. No, I, we, should do a, we should do a couple of call outs where we'll clip this up later. It'll be like, my dream guest, Iman Gazi. My yes, dream sir. guest, Graham Stephan. We'll clip it up. Yeah. Those clips go viral. They hop on. Yeah. Mm. yeah. <laughs> my dream guest, Iman Gazi. Let's go. My dream guest, Graham Stephan. <laughs> My dream guest is Cody Co. Cody My Co would be sick. <laughs> that would actually yeah. be a good one. Especially with our running experience. I love his little like choo-choo train the, thing. Yeah, yeah. That, that was real because me and Max did a marathon last year. Mm. Yeah, don't don't Google our names. Don't pull up the stats. Don't pull up the times. But <laughs> as we were training for that, seeing his videos was actually pretty motivating. Yeah, like, yeah. Same time. That, that, that was awesome. a good experience too. You doing yeah, it again? Yeah. We did the CIM, by the way, which is the California National Marathon. Pretty massive. Mm -hmm. Super mm -hmm. flat. So that was apparently a good thing, but for me, it was still difficult. <laughs> Bro, that was... I heard there was an uphill. like Yeah, but overall, like, they rank marathons, yeah. and this is one of the most flat marathons ever, because it's, like, yeah, it's throughout Sacramento. And this is yeah. where people go to, like, qualify for the best time yeah, and, yeah. like, set like, records for marathons. How does that feel? You know, like, tw 20 miles in, you like, how, how do you feel? Bro, it was a trip. When you're 15 miles into a run, mm -hmm. and you know that, like... You're barely, you're, yeah. you're only halfway there. When you're 15 miles in and you know you have 10 more miles to go, yeah, it's kind of, it, it's a crazy feeling, but it was, it was a beautiful, I recommend everybody try one. It was a beautiful feeling. I remember at one point it, it got emotional, man. I was like <laughs> halfway into it. The sun, it was a rainy day. The sun was starting to come up. I yeah. got oceans. 
by Hillsong wow. playing in the earbuds. And it just felt like such a glorious moment. And I felt so happy to be alive yeah. it's, and just like persevering through that struggle mm -hmm. and then finishing that, setting this goal wow. and accomplishing it, bro. You, you got to do it. You're the, you're the only one on this do. podcast who has it. Next like, year, we might have to run it up. I'm not doing it this year. Um, for the boys. I have not been training, but we should definitely run it up. The boys marathon. I, it's honestly really, really That'd sick. A movie. I mean, yeah. I, I, I talked to one of my boys, Jacob. He He's doing it this year too. And like he's uh, curating his playlist. And uh -huh. I, I think mm -hmm. I, I didn't do that. Like I played some of the hardest songs like right off the bat. <laughs> and that kind of wore me oh. out a little bit. But he starts off, again, I, I'm probably butchering his strategy, mm -hmm. but it's more like calm in the beginning and he's just yeah. trying to keep the pace. And then once he starts slowing down, then he amps up the music and it kind of keeps him at a steady pace. And he has some great time. So, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'm taking that advice. That's, that's really smart, actually. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm listening to like David Goggins, Mile One. I'm just going <laughs> yeah. crazy. Wait, really? Like, yeah. I kind of thought I about, that. Up with about that. I mean, you, you could start with like no and music. And then my AirPods die at the end. Oh, and no. I'm like, last last 10 miles were, were a trip. I hear that serious runners won't actually listen to music because yeah. it does affect their cadence and well, like their speed. So, it does play an impact. So, it does yeah. make sense as a strategy. Yeah. I had the, the podcast that i was listening to it was joe rogan just had more plates more dates on oh yeah yeah me yeah, too. yeah i was like i was bumping that and that it was a long night. one yeah, yeah. really got a piece so let's come on, how little break let's do that little break. clap just clap like, clap fall. clap an hour that's all bros bro got some pressure in that pipe <laughs> what you mean <laughs> you can hear it you can hear it. <laughs> <laughs> yo <laughs> yo we have to cut that out <laughs> no i feel like this is this is pretty cool how do we how do we wrap this up Nah, bro, you can't be using wrap-up language. That's it's the it's the retention drop-off. You can't. Mm. Not, not